Oh my god, felicitations! Welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. I can't with how ridiculous this video is going to be. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. And I am dressed this way today because I am also newly obsessed with the Netflix show Bridgerton. So like the show Bridgerton, I have decided to dress in a way that looks period appropriate, but if you analyse any of the details, it's actually wildly anachronistic. And I'm pretty sure this shirt is Primark, so that's... That's not great. So after the success of the Ratatouille musical on TikTok that I'm still trying to wrap my head around, the world has gone even crazier and this is now just a thing that people do. So somebody has started making a Bridgerton musical on TikTok because those things obviously need to go together. Bridgerton, musical theater, TikTok. So a lot of people are getting involved with this project like they did with the Ratatouille one, especially after they saw how far the Ratatouille musical could go. No one expected that to be as big of a thing as it turned out to be. It has legs. It has four of them, in fact, because it's a because it's a rat. I was incredibly late to the Ratatouille hype train because I was dubious about it and I didn't really understand what was going on. This time, I'm ready. And I'm still in my Bridgerton honeymoon phase as as they are on episode six of Bridgerton. If you've seen it, you know. If you know, you know. And I, I know. I'm going to look at some of the TikToks and react to them, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna vibe. We're gonna see what the Bridgerton musical vibe is. It occurs to me, by the way, there is a very small chance that I will get through this video without giving you Bridgerton spoilers. So if you're currently watching, if you have not yet finished, if this is something you would like to watch and you don't want spoilers, maybe don't watch the rest of this video. There's a Bridget in the musical. TikTokers have written some tunes. Stay tuned to find out if it's good. So a lot of it has come from Abigail Barlow, who from what I can tell is a big TikTok contributor. She is a songwriter who writes her own music and is writing songs for the hypothetical Bridgerton musical. Okay, but what if Bridgerton was a musical? <clears throat> what a beautiful party. I'm looking up at the ceiling. I'm obsessed with the accent switch that she's American, but does a pretty convincing English accent. Also, beautiful voice. If you've seen the show, there are literally so many scenes that go like this, where they're just like forlornly staring at each other across a, a fancy ball. This could be from any single episode. This is called Daphne's Song. She's the main character. I love that. It's beautiful. Right? It's haunting. It's very appropriate for the Bridgerton vibe. Now, a lot of people, when she wrote these songs, weren't really sure about it being appropriate for the time period. Now, the thing about Bridgerton is, not only are the costumes slightly period inappropriate, if you look at them, and obviously it's rewritten history to a certain extent, they do this with the music on the show as well. If you didn't know already, every time they go to a fancy ball, which is like five times per episode because they're incredibly busy, it's the social season, mama. The music that they play at the balls is modern pop songs that has been arranged for period appropriate instruments. So they'll have like Billie Eilish, Bad Guy, and they'll have Ariana Grande, and a lot of other pop songs that I am too much of a musical theatre lover to have been able to recognise. I'm wondering if they had that idea completely separately to Six, the musical, but the timeline of the two is certainly persuasive. Obviously with Six having just started performances on Broadway, having gained a large amount of notoriety, this is the thing that if you don't know, Six do in their pre-show is they have modern female pop songs played on classical Tudor instruments. So it's all very Beyonce on a harpsichord. It's completely the same vibe to what they do in Bridgerton, which makes me wonder if that's where they got the idea. But so the music for a Bridgerton musical, what style would we want that to to be. My inclination here is that this is a really good musical style to go with for a Bridgerton musical, and that you'd have something that sounds theatrical and sort of timeless, but still has a modern edge to it, without being obviously and completely contemporary. This next one, Burn For You, has 2.8 million views. I'm always thrilled if at least five people watch my videos. <laughs> Oh, and half of that's my parents. And this is a duet meant for the two romantic lead characters, Daphne and Simon. So I want to watch it as a duet rather than with her duetting with herself. This is Burn For You. Oh, this has been in my head all day. Round of separate rooms. 
from our labyrinth. The chords. Please forgive me your grace. Can even look me in the face. It's so theatrical. She's clearly a pop songwriter, but it has a deliberate theatricality to it. It's very musical theatre. I was prepared to take my life. Spoilers, BT dubs. I stole your fate. I stole your no, fate. I stole your fate. It's so high. I don't understand. This has the same thing as Waitress, where a female songwriter wrote all the songs sort of in her voice at the lower end of her range for the male characters, and they come out so high. I would love that so much more in a delicious baritone, but I'd love it anyway. Harmonised riffing. Oh, is there anything more romantic than harmonised riffing? That again reminds me of Waitress. That's very... I know what's right for me. That was neither of the harmonies, but you get what I was going for. I really love that song, and I think that's been one of the most popular ones that Abigail has released so far. It really captures the intensity and the passion of their relationship. I like that that's clearly a start of the song. I would want it to then break into some sort of lush romantic end of act one duet. Unless act one ends when they kiss in the maze. <gasps> so many possibilities. This is what the fun part is about adapting something to the stage, is getting to make these kinds of choices. But I do think Simon should be a baritone. Colin can be a tenor. Colin is definitely a tenor. Okay, part three, What If Bridgerton Was a Musical, is Penelope Featherington's song. I know that Carrie Hope Fletcher has done a cover of this, so I'm straight up gonna go and look for that on her TikTok. Where are you? That's Cats. Did her cat sing it? No, here it is. Never as thin, never as perfect, never for him, never deserving of the boy I love. Oh, this is sweet. Never the star, always an asteroid, delicate heart, forever the last the star, choice always an asteroid. I'm obsessed with rhyming I anything with asteroid. That's talent. So I talent. Keep it all in. It's like I'm invisible in my own skin. Give up on the fictional fairy tale and you're not Cinderella, you're <laughs> just Penelope Featherington. Penelope Featherington is the most awkward name to ever have to try and scan into a musical theatre line. Points for trying. I love Carrie's little aside nod to the fact that she literally is going to be playing Cinderella in the West End as and when the world ever reopens. I like that song. That one's been really popular. I've seen so many uh, girls doing covers of that on TikTok. I feel like I like the other ones more. It's just kind of a nothing song. That's the one I'd skip on a cast recording if I'm being perfectly honest. And when you're at the early forming stages, you don't want to be writing songs that are skippable. You want everything to be a banger. Only bangers. It also has that whole like plinky plunky like blink, 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 blink. That's the backing that a few of these numbers have and it's sort of starting to grate on me a little bit that it's just a lot of similarity. I'd like to see more of a difference in musical styles, which to be fair, the next song has. This is one of my favourite characters. This is Eloise Bridgerton. I have already watched the video of Abigail singing it a bunch of times. I'm going to go to this video, L Choreography, EL Choreography, who has choreographed dance routines to all of the Bridgerton musical songs because they clearly have an awful lot of time on their hands. And so I want to watch this choreography with this song. I guess I have to be a lady Smiling and waving Constantly obeying Although I question where in the world this is that they're able to do this in the middle of a pandemic. If she can dance like that while belting, I'll be wildly impressed. I feel like occasionally these TikTok choreographers get slightly carried away with what they expect vocalists to do. But I definitely see her dancing sassily around some society ladies. That is one of my favourite songs. Belty, sassy, everything Eloise Bridgerton needs to be in a musicalised version of Bridgerton. Someone's done a Playbill cover. What does it look like? Oh, it's Daphne. It's like a silhouette Daphne. Is she gonna have eyes? I don't think she's gonna have eyes. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, no, I have a few issues with this Playbill design. 
Why is she blue? First of all, I want it to be spring colours. I want it to be blossomy. I like the flowers at the top. I don't like the dark background. Why does she not have eyes? I know this is like a trend thing, but I question it. If she just wants to be a side profile, that's quite of the era, but don't give her eyebrows and not eyes. Also, she would not be the Playbill cover unless she's like a massive star in the role, but it's not about her. It's about her and Simon. It is equal parts about the two of them. It is a romantic love story. We need a Playbill cover that has both of them on there. Has anyone done that? <gasps> Someone has! Here we go. We have a Playbill design. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Oh, they're both so attractive, which is what makes the show very watchable. Look at the detail on that dress. Yes, she has eyes. Yay for eyes. Oh, you know, even in line drawing, he's very attractive. <laughs> Hands are hard. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Now, that's very similar to, like, the Netflix advertising and marketing materials, but that is what I would want the playbill to look like, possibly with the real actors who would be cast, which is another conversation for another day. Someone wrote in Sienna's song. I forget who Sienna is. Ah, oh, that's Sienna. She looks like Sienna. Jeez. All of these songs are women singing solos of like, oh, I'm sad and I wish my life were different. Like, you can't make a whole musical out of slow female solos. We need some variety, people. Someone write an ensemble number for this musical, please. A comedy song. Can someone please write a Bridgerton comedy song? Now, she is a singer in the show, so if anyone should sing like a Never Enough, I'm an opera singer, but we're going to belt because it's a musical style number. This is a lovely song. Even if it was a slightly annoying plotline. Will they? Can't they? They try to. They give up. He wants to. She wants to. They bang under some bleachers at a very public boxing match. But this is like the vibe of the Bridgerton musical so far. What do we think? I'm curious as to what people think about this compared with Bridgerton the TV series, compared with other musicals, you know, compared with the Ratatouille musical on TikTok. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are already. Have we really seen Regency style and period in musical theatre? There was a Jane Eyre musical, it wasn't super successful. I feel like there's definitely been Pride and Prejudice musical adaptations, again, not wildly successful. So of the big sort of Austin and Bronte novels, they've definitely been theatricalized more successfully as plays. We haven't really seen a musical adaptation. So I'm curious as to whether this would actually work and what audiences would think of it and how they would respond to this. The other issue, and I hate to keep coming back to this point like I did with Ratatouille, but these TikTokers do not actually own the rights to Bridgerton. Bridgerton has been an incredibly successful Netflix series that literally just happened. If you look at how long it took them to get frozen from the film to the stage, it took a fairly long time, even when they saw how wildly successful it was, and I'm sure that this was an idea they were having very early on. As soon as Greatest Showman came out in cinemas, they were talking about a stage version. We still haven't seen that yet. All of the Disney theatricals were significantly after they had been released, like decades later. Frozen is probably the fastest screen to stage adaptation that we have seen. Most of what's becoming popular on Broadway now in terms of film adaptation musicals are films that happened years ago. Stuff like Beetlejuice, stuff like Heathers, are very, very old films. So the likelihood of us getting a Bridgerton musical with this kind of immediacy, I think is unlikely. And Bridgerton has been so successful that the producers of Bridgerton are going to want to capitalize on that with more seasons. I'm pretty sure it's based on eight books. So we could have eight seasons of Bridgerton on Netflix before they finally let us do a musical version. So I'm enjoying this. It passes the vibe check. I'm going to keep talking about it on YouTube. I would love to see where it goes just to see this kind of creativity. I think it's a great thing, but I'm not convinced it's actually going to happen. Perhaps I'm wrong. Change my mind in the comment section down below. And let me know who you would cast in a Bridgerton musical because that's what I want to start thinking about next. Thank you for watching this video. If you did, make sure to go and check out the other musical theatre videos on my channel. There are plenty because I've spent the past year sat in my home with very little to do. Relatable, I know. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for lots more stagey content coming very soon. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For ten more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!